Hi everyone, welcome to JavaScript Bytes where we solve practical JavaScript problems in bite-sized chunks. If you have ever wondered what the heck WebAssembly is and why people are talking about it like it's the future of the web, you're in the right place. Today, I'm going to break it all down in a way that's super easy to understand. We are going to cover what WebAssembly is, why it matters, and even build a simple example right here together. By the end of this video, you won't just know what WebAssembly is, you will have already used it. So let's go. So first things first, what is WebAssembly? Often shortened to WASM. So WebAssembly or WASM is defined as a low-level binary instruction format designed to be safe, fast, and platform-independent runtime for high-level languages on the web. Don't worry, that sounds way more intimidating than it really is. Think of it like this. Normally, when we write code for the web, we use JavaScript, right? But what if we could write code in another language like C, C++, Rust, or others, and run that in the browser at near native speed? That's what WebAssembly allows. It gives us a way to run high-performance code on the web. WebAssembly is fast because it's compiled to a low-level binary format that the browser can execute directly. It's secure, runs in a sandbox environment, and it doesn't replace JavaScript. It works with it. Think of it like having a turbocharged engine under your usual web stack. Fun fact, even JavaScript engines themselves, like Chrome's V8, are written in C++. So in a way, when you run JavaScript in the browser, you are already relying on the speed and power of C++ behind the scenes. WebAssembly is being used in game development by tools like Unity and Godot for high-performance gaming. Apps like Figma and AutoCAD use it to run powerful design software directly in the browser. Even tools like FFmpeg for video processing and TensorFlow for machine learning are powered by WASM. Before we go any further, WebAssembly is not just a backend thing. In fact, it was built for the browser. Its superpower is that it runs at near native speed right in your front-end web apps. That's why Figma feels lightning fast in the browser, but WebAssembly has grown beyond the front end. You can now use it on the server, on desktop, and even on mobile. So it's truly cross-platform. All right, enough talk about WebAssembly, time to start using it. And we need to start by installing its tooling, that is mscripten. But before we install mscripten, make sure you have two things installed on your system, Git and Python 3. I would also recommend Visual Studio Code from Microsoft as the editing environment, but that is optional. So you'll need Git to clone the mscript in SDK, and Python is required to run its internal tools. You can check if you already have them by running these commands in your terminal. Okay, if any of these give you an error, then you can install git from git-scm.com and going to the downloads page and, and Python from python.org and going to downloads. Visual Studio Code can be downloaded from code.visualstudio.com. The main tooling that we need to get WebAssembly working today is mscripten from mscripten.org. So once the prerequisites are installed, let's grab the mscripten SDK. Important note is don't install this inside your project folder. Instead, put it somewhere like your home directory, maybe tools or dev. Think of mscripten like your compiler. Install it once and use it for many projects. Let's try it out. We'll use C++ today to compile a function to WebAssembly. First, make sure you have mscripten compiler installed. It's the tool chain that lets us compile C++ into WebAssembly. So follow these steps. So on the inscriptor.org page, scroll down to where it says download and install the SDK. Grab this command to clone the mscripten repo from git and then go back to your terminal. Now create a location where you would install it. I'm going to install it in this folder and issue the git clone command I just copied. It's going to take a while, so I'm going to pause and come back when it's done. Okay, it's done. Next, we need to step into the folder and issue command emsdk install latest. This is gonna take a while and download some gigabytes of contents. So I'm gonna pause here and come back when it's done. 
Next step is to issue the activate command, which is emstk activate latest. It doesn't take that long. Now, one of the most important steps, we need to execute emstk env.bat file. Note the last step is crucial. It sets up your terminal so it knows where to find and script and tools like emcc. Think of it like unlocking the compiler for your current session. Now, if you launch Visual Studio Code from this terminal using code dot, VS Code will automatically know where to find and script and tools like emcc. Just make sure you keep working in that particular VS Code window. Opening it from start menu won't have environment variables set because they are already present in this shell environment. Okay, I have switched to my project folder now. Now if I start the terminal and now we need to confirm whether we have access to emcc. So I'm going to go to command prompt and say emcc dash dash version and it works perfect so we can start working on our code files now let's create a simple c plus plus file so let's add a new file called square root dot cpp or sqrt dot cpp and you can type with me Right, this defines a C++ function called compute square root that takes a number and returns its square root. The extern C part tells the compiler not to mangle the function name, which C++ normally does to support function overloading. We need it in this case so JavaScript can find the function by its exact name. Mscript and keep alive macro ensures that this function isn't removed during optimization. By default, Mscript and strips out unused functions but since we are calling this from JavaScript, not from within C++, we have to tell the compiler to keep it. Perfect. Now let's compile this C++ code into WebAssembly using mscripten. If you are using Windows command prompt, remember to use double quotes around the flags. Let me get rid of this. Let's break this command down. EMCC is our compiler. Exported functions tell mscript and with C++ functions we want to access from JavaScript. Notice that underscore before compute square root, mscript and adds that prefix during compilation. Exported runtime methods include helper functions from the inscript and runtime like crap and ccall. These make it easier to call C++ functions directly from JavaScript. If you are only using crap, you can just keep that. Square root.cpp is our input file. Dash o square root.js is our output file. If we go back to a file menu, we see it produces two files. Square root.wasm is our compiled WebAssembly binary. And square root.js is a JavaScript glue code that loads the WebAssembly and connects it to the browser. Now let's create an HTML file to use our WebAssembly module from the browser. You can name it anything, doesn't matter. Let me type the contents and then I'll explain. Let's break down this HTML file so you understand how everything connects. At the top in the header section, we include the square root.js file, which contains the JavaScript glue code generated by mscripten. This file knows how to load the WebAssembly binary and expose our C++ function to JavaScript. In the body section, we have a simple UI, a number input, a button, and a paragraph to show the result. When you click the button, it calls the call square root function. Let's focus on script tag now. Mscripten automatically defines a global object called module. This line waits for the WebAssembly module to finish loading. 
then uses CREP to wrap a compute square root C++ function so it can be called like a regular JavaScript function. The function reads the number from the input field, passes it to our C++ compute square root function running inside WebAssembly, and displays the result on the page. All of this is happening right in the browser, no server processing needed. So in short, the browser loads the WebAssembly modules via square root.js, the CREP function lets us call C++ from JavaScript, and WebAssembly does the math, and JavaScript updates the page. Now let's pause here and address something that confuses a lot of beginners. You can't just double click this HTML file and expect it to work. WebAssembly modules are binary files and browsers don't allow loading them directly from the file system due to security restrictions like cores. So even though WebAssembly is used in front-end code, it must be served using a local or remote web server. This is because .wasm files must be served with the correct MIME type application slash WASM, and the browser only treats them correctly when they are loaded over HTTP, not from local file path. So yes, it's still a front-end technology, but for it to run, the browser expected to be delivered like any web resource over a server. So we have multiple ways of doing that. If you like Node, here's the easiest way to get a web server running. Dot. Dot is important. Uh, note it might download HTTP server if not installed already and then start a web server. You can also issue command python3 m http dot server and it would do the same. Right, so I like Node, so I'm going to stick with the npx HTTP server, and it is telling me that it's running on localhost 8080. So here's what I'm going to go. We select the square root.html and press compute square root, and nothing happened. Okay, let's check what's going on. Oh, there's some spelling mistake. Uh, It is document. Okay, reload, compute square root, and result three is being printed on the screen. You can try something else, like give it 121, and the result is correct. And this is all happening with C++ code. So there you go. You just compiled C++ into WebAssembly and executed it in the browser. WebAssembly is not just for browsers, Platforms like Cloudflare workers use it to run server-side code at the edge. Tools like Wasmer and WasmTime let you run WebAssembly on the desktop or mobile. And with WebGPU coming, high-performance graphics will be possible right in the browser. So today you learned what WebAssembly is, how it's being used in the real world, and how to use it yourself with C++ and mscripten. You even touched on how it's changing the game beyond the web. If this video helped you out, smash that like button, share it with your dev friends, and consider subscribing for more hands-on, beginner-friendly coding videos. Got questions? Drop them in the comments. I read every single one. Until next time, happy coding, stay curious.